Good afternoon to everyone present here uh, and thank you for joining us uh, in today's webinar which is titled EMS for NDT Applications. My name is Arvind Krishnan and I'm a technical uh, person here at EMWorks and I will be your presenter for today. Um, and just as a reminder, this uh, technical session webinar will be recorded and uh, email of the recording will be sent to all the participants who registered to attend this webinar. So um, you will be sent uh, a recording of this link. Okay. And also as a reminder, this webinar is done through GoToMeeting and uh, if you want to ask us any questions, please feel free to type in your um, questions in the message box and at the end of this webinar, uh, I will be going over some of the questions and will be very happy to answer them. Okay. With this, uh, let me go ahead and start without any further delay and um, here we go. So what is the agenda for today? We're going to start with a brief introduction of what is EMS, what this program is all about and how it can help you. What are the various applications it can address and some of the key industries where these applications fall under. Next we will be looking at NDT applications in particular and see how EMS will play a role in um, people who are uh, in this field and people who are designing sensors and probes specifically for NDT applications. Okay. Then we will talk about product bundles how we package our products, what are the different bundles that one can uh, buy. And finally, uh, we will also um, uh, have a product demonstration with an NDT example. Now let me start with what is EMS. Basically EMS is electromagnetic uh, finite element based simulation software. Okay? That's embedded completely inside uh, major 3D CAD systems of today like SolidWorks, uh, Autodesk Inventor, and space claim. Okay. Uh, EMS basically th there are two kinds of EM simulation that uh, our company offers. The first one is the low frequency EM simulation where one can do a simulation of up to a uh, few hundred megahertz. Okay. And the product that is of interest and that will enable you to do that is EMS. Okay. And that is major that is going to be the topic for today as well. Also there's another kind of electromagnetic simulation which we call as a high frequency electromagnetic simulation um, where you can analyze frequencies of up to a few tens of gigahertz. Okay? And the product that enables you to do that is called HFWorks. Okay? Both EMS and HFWorks are products from EMWorks which is the name of the company. Now both these products make use of a technique called finite element technique or finite element analysis to, to solve uh, the equations and give you the solution. So it's a well, um, um, well accepted and a proven technology that we use um, to solve uh, Maxwell's equation in the case of electromagnetics. Okay. Now using these products one will be able to visualize the magnetic fields, the magnetic forces, eddy currents, induced voltage, etc. So any magnetic phenomena uh, can actually be uh, visualized and measured using these products. Okay. Also these products lend themselves to be um, solved in a multiphysics mode and where we have coupled motion as well as thermal simulations available uh, for uh, EMS. Now uh, let's look at some of the application areas where EMS falls under. Okay. Now basically EMS is the low frequency application. You can go up to a few hundred megahertz uh, of AC frequency uh, in, uh, in EMS. Okay? And some of the application really falls under some major headings as you see in the left. Other, one is electromechanical where you're going to talk about uh, designing actuators, motors, uh, magnetic recording heads, uh, solenoids, loudspeakers, etc. That's possible. Um, also, we have, you can design coils, permanent magnets, magnet arrays, um, high voltage uh, applications like insulators and so on. Um, and also EMS uh, can play a role in uh, power electronics where one can uh, design um, transformers, uh, inverters, uh, the performance of your bus bar and, and things like that. And finally, you can also look at uh, some of the shielding properties. How well have you shielded um, your components? Uh, electromagnetic shielding uh, is possible. Okay? 
And uh, electromagnetics as a field has a wide range of applications as you saw here and also they span across a wide variety of industries. Okay? Automotive, transportation, aerospace, consumer goods, energy, industrial equipments, life sciences, um, name it, uh, there are a variety of energy, I mean a variety of uh, industries that can uh, benefit from using these technologies. Okay? On the right side, uh, which is really not the topic for today, but I'm going to briefly um, uh, talk upon, is our high frequency solution. That's mainly for people designing RF and microwave components, uh, filters, RF filters, RF couplers. Uh, we're talking about uh, people who design antennas um, uh, and uh, things of that sort. Okay? Even there, there is electromagnetic interference, electromagnetic compatibility. Uh, those kind of simulation and analysis can be tackled using HFOs. Now let us now jump into the topic for today which is NDT applications. Okay. So uh, some of the common methods that uh, non-destructive testing or they are also called non-destructive um, uh, uh, simulations um, and they include eddy current testing, magnetic particle testing, um, they could use uh, some kind of ultrasonic uh, uh, principles to detect uh, um, defects in your in your material. Also, radiographic, and there are a lot of more uh, methods that are used by NDT or non-destructive evaluation (NDE) as it may sometimes be called. Uh, but some of the common methods are listed here. Okay. And where does EMS fall into play? Is EMS can actually help you in designing uh, your sensors, your probes, your NDT equipment, uh, basically where the method involves either uh, some kind of eddy current testing or uh, some kind of magnetic type of testing in, um, which includes magnetic particle testing. Okay? And any other method, there are a lot of newly adopted methods now that, if, uh, that involve different kinds of excitation um, which are also based out of uh, electromagnetics uh, one can use uh, for non-destructive testing and, um, and, and for most of these uh, uh, methods of using uh, non-destructive testing EMS can actually uh, benefit, uh, uh, users can benefit by using EMS uh, to design uh, their uh, sensors and probes. Now let's look at the, by far the most common form of electromagnetic based non-destructive uh, testing which is called the eddy current testing. Okay? Now eddy current testing as the name suggests uh, makes use of eddy currents generated uh, due to an exciting uh, say uh, AC um, coil. Okay? Uh, it's basically used for both uh, surface inspection as well as any kind of tubing inspection. So it's, it's a great um, uh, device, the great uh, uh, method uh, if you want to inspect pipes uh, or if you want to inspect any wells or surface uh, phenomena. Okay? They can be used for both conductors as well as ferromagnetic substances and hence uh, it's, it's really um, quite universal as far as its use is concerned. Now these methods are extensively today used in the field of aerospace, uh, also some petrol uh, industry and uh, the method is uh, proven very sensitive and it can detect uh, cracks, even minute cracks uh, can be detected uh, based on the sensitivity of the sensor. Now this is a brief principle, the, the diagram here illustrates what happens. Okay? When you see there is a coil that is excited using AC current. Now this coil produces an alternating magnetic field um, whose frequency also varies very similar to the uh, frequency of excitation of the coil and this rapidly varying magnetic field generates eddy current. Okay? And this is Faraday's law and there is going to be eddy current generated in the uh, plate as you see here. Now this eddy current uh, has its own field which opposes, uh, which opposes the magnetic field that is generated uh, by the coil. Okay. And uh, this uh, causes some amount, some changes in the impedance of the coil. Okay. And now that uh, value can be measured using a sensitive electronic equipment and one can detect whether cracks are there or not cracks are there. Okay. Uh, in, the, in the case where there are no cracks or no, uh, I would say, sizable cracks, um, you're going to get a uniform uh, eddy current distribution as you see here. This is just uh, currents in, in a circle. Okay. 
and that's going to generate one type of uh, induced voltage or um, I would say uh, a change in impedance in the coil which is well um, recorded and, and it's, it's known. Okay? But when, you, when this coil uh, comes across uh, a region where there is a crack as you see in the right hand image, right hand side image, there is going to be uh, a change in the distribution of eddy currents as you see here. So right around the crack, the, 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 the eddy currents are going to just uh, follow the curvature of the crack and just go around it. Okay? And that causes a different kind of magnetic field generated by this eddy current. And this difference in the magnetic field actually results in, in, in a new uh, impedance of the coil or a new induced voltage. And this is basically the principle by which one can detect if there is any kind of surface defects or crack uh, in the component that you're testing. Okay. So basically, if there is a presence of the crack and if, it, if the instrument is sensitive enough, then uh, it is going to uh, reflect uh, either in the induced voltage of the coil or, and also in the impedance of the coil. And by measuring this change in impedance or change in induced voltage, one can actually know about uh, the presence of a crack. Okay? And also based on the degree to which this impedance changes, uh, one can get uh, information about the size of the crack, the depth of the crack and so on. Okay? Um, oftentimes you, uh, you will have two coils, not just one coil. There's going to be a coil that is excited and there's also going to be a receiver coil. And, uh, the res uh, and the impedance and the induced voltage is, is measured across the receiver coil. Uh, and that, uh, in most of the modern probes and sensors, uh, you're going to have two types of coils, two kinds of coils and two coils. And uh, EMS will be, um, uh, will be an application that can suitably and readily solve those types of sensors. Now really, uh, where can EMS uh, play a role here? <coughs> You can design uh, uh, coils and you can uh, size your coils. Basically, the uh, coil that is excited and also the receiver coil, uh, the size of the coil, the number of turns, the current that you need to supply, the frequency of your AC current, <coughs> all of those things can actually um, be determined with the help of EMS. Okay? You can also uh, vary the size of the coil, um, uh, sorry, vary the size of the crack uh, to see how well your, how sensitive is your coil design, your sensor design, um, and how does it, uh, how does the size of the crack vary, and how does it uh, change the impedance? So one can track that. Okay, and finally you can also get some field quantities in a 3D fashion. You can look at the eddy current distribution, and you can also look at the magnetic field distribution. Now, uh, let me briefly uh, demonstrate what I've talked so far using our product. So I'm going to jump into a small product demonstration where I'm going to have um, SolidWorks. Now, let us uh, uh, go through uh, the, the model uh, and uh, part by part. So there is actually a plate here. And, uh, 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 and for the benefit of um, uh, our uh, attendees today, I have exaggerated um, the, the defect. So there is actually a defect. In this case it could be a crack and it can extend to a, uh, I mean a longer way or it can be a small crack. Okay? So here is a crack that goes um, um, the way it is. It follows this contour here. Okay? And uh, here is an exciting coil. Uh, it's a pancake type coil that is uh, commonly used in these type of applications. And there is also another pancake type coil which is the receiver coil. And uh, the sensor is actually composed of the exciting coil, the receiver coil, and some electronics, uh, basically a circuitry that helps you to determine the impedance, the induced voltage, etc., of your um, coil. Uh, the, basically, the receiver coil. All right. So this is uh, really the sensor. This is what uh, one would like to um, design. So, so I have a basic uh, design of a coil that uh, comprises the uh, the volume of the coil and uh, and how it is placed and the shape of the coil and and at what height it is actually placed from the uh, surface that needs to be evaluated and all of that is designed using SolidWorks. Uh, EMS is a product that is uh, directly embedded inside SolidWorks. So if you're using uh, uh, SolidWorks or uh, a CAD system like uh, Autodesk Inventor or Spaceclaim, 
uh, our product uh, EMS uh, is embedded inside those. Okay, for today we're going to be using SolidWorks for today's demonstration. Okay. Now, uh, the way uh, simulation is done in EMS is through uh, what we call as defining studies. Okay, here I'm going to define a couple of studies which I've already done so. The first is no defect. Okay, and how does this study differ from the study which is called defect? Okay. Um, in EMS, uh, we need to assign materials to the, uh, each components. You see here, the plate is made up of aluminum. Okay, it's a conductor material. Um, and there is a defect is also modeled as a solid geometry here. And in this case, because there is no defect, um, the, the material of the plate and the material of that solid geometry that forms the volume of the defect is going to be the same. It's going to be aluminum. Okay. Then uh, we have a coil, these uh, uh, pancake coils are made out of copper. So there is this um, uh, coil that is excited and there is this receiving coil. Both of these are made of copper. Um, and um, with respect to uh, how it is excited, the pancake coil here uh, uh, is excited with a 5 volt peak-to-peak, uh, -peak, uh, uh, 5 volt AC peak-to-peak. -peak, okay? Now it's a voltage driven coil. Um, uh, and the 5 volt AC is about 3.54 uh, volts uh, RMS value. Okay, so uh, in EMS uh, for these AC type of simulations, you enter the RMS value. So we enter the RMS value here, um, and uh, uh, you can tell um, uh, the program uh, the 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 components that comprise the coil and the um, cross section through which uh, the coil uh, the current actually goes in. Now um, another thing that is uh, useful and important is the frequency of excitation and usually for uh, non-destructive testing uh, purposes you're going to use very high frequency uh, alternating current and that allows us to uh, actually even detect minute cracks uh, and so on. Okay? So here the frequency that uh, we're going to use is about 100 kilohertz. Okay? And uh, also the performance of your sensor varies with, um, depends on the frequency. So one can actually do uh, a, a various simulations uh, using different frequencies to see uh, how well, how sensitive one's de one uh, design is. Okay. All right, so this is uh, a study that uh, resembles uh, a normal uh, plate with no defect. Now I've also organized, as you see here, one can organize many different simulations. I've organized a study which is called defect. And for all practical purposes, it's extremely similar to the previous study, but for one difference. And that difference uh, is in the component out of which this defect is made out of. Okay. In the previous uh, study, which we said no defect, we said that the defect is made, um, that geometry that represents the defect is made of aluminum. Uh, whereas in this simulation, uh, it's it's a void, it's a crack, so it's basically filled with air. So we're going to um, uh, assign air to that uh, defect. Okay. Now uh, we also have uh, the pancake coil uh, here, uh, which is um, which is excited using a five volt peak-to-peak uh, -peak, uh, voltage. Then there is this plate. Uh, with with this crack that's aluminum, and uh, the receiver coil is a, is just a passive coil, and uh, this is a coil which is made of copper, and this is basically a coil uh, where uh, your impedance uh, changes and your induced voltage is going to be um, uh, monitored or computed. Okay. Now with this, pretty much the setup of the problem is 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 complete. Okay, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, EMS is a finite element type of program, so something that is very inherent to all finite element type of uh, simulation is the concept of meshing. Now meshing is the process by which one can break up the geometry into what we call as finite element mesh. Okay? And uh, in EMS we employ a very automatic uh, meshing procedure, uh, so let me go ahead and show you and uh, what is a mesh. So here uh, the intelligence built in the software uh, pretty much uh, takes into account uh, uh, the geometry, uh, the variation of geometry, the size, etc. And it, it builds an automatic, um, I would say an optimal mesh uh, for the best results. So, um, so meshing 
is really uh, a task that is completely automated uh, by EMS. Nevertheless, EMS also allows you to apply mesh controls. So you can vary the size of the jaw, size of your mesh and various components on faces, etc. EMS uh, allows you to do so. Okay. Now, um, with respect to uh, uh, the study where there are no defects, uh, we can take a look at uh, some of the uh, plots like uh, you can take a look at the, um, the eddy current distribution, for example. This is vectorially. Uh, the distribution of uh, eddy currents uh, in the plate. So you see here, uh, this is a case where there is no vector and you can see a complete circular symmetry in the eddy currents. As we noticed there uh, in, the, in the image that I showed you earlier in the PowerPoint, you have um, a nice uh, round perfect circle distribution of eddy current on the surface of, uh, of, these, uh, of the, uh, the plate. Okay? Uh, and it's uh, it's well uh, and this eddy current actually generates a field and one can actually compute what the induced voltage is going to be in the uh, receiver coil and that's uh, close to about 4.6 uh, millivolt okay so uh, when there is no defect um, if you connect a voltmeter across the receiver coil uh, it's going to show a value of about uh, 4.6 millivolt Okay. At this particular height, when you keep this uh, test probe or your sensor at this particular height. Okay. And this is kind of important because this is going to be your reference value. Okay. And let's now uh, revert back to the uh, study where we do have a defect. Okay. So let's first look at how the eddy currents are distributed. Now you see here the distribution of eddy current, uh, the pattern and the values, etc. Uh, the, they're a little different than what you saw earlier. Okay, this uh, right at the edge of the defect, you, you're going to see uh, really a large uh, uh, current around the edges there. Okay, and also it's not a perfect circle as you see. It kind of follows how your defect is. Okay, and this allows us uh, a variation in the induced voltage or impedance. Okay, now let's go ahead look at the result table, and if you just look at the induced voltage. Uh, it's no longer 4.6 millivolt. Um, you have an induced voltage of about 5.4 millivolt. Okay. Now this change, uh, this even this small change, about one millivolt, uh, with very sophisticated uh, uh, circuitry, can can be easily detected. And then this detection can be calibrated based on the size of the uh, defect and uh, and also the uh, depth of the defect. So. So one can run several uh, simulations and, uh, and you can uh, indeed calibrate how good your sensor is going to be um, right uh, using this product in the computer. Okay. So uh, EMS allows you a nice way of comparing. So I've got um, two different simulations, one with defect, other without a defect. And you can take in uh, any of the quantities, say for example, uh, your induced voltage, um, uh, magnitude of your induced voltage in your uh, receiving coil and you can see how they vary um, say from 56 uh, millivolt uh, all the way to 66 millivolt um, uh, variation uh, in the uh, in the total induced voltage this is the magnitude okay so and this variation actually uh, impacts uh, the impedance of the coil so one can actually even take a look at the impedance of the coil um, and how the impedance is vary, varying between the two studies. So it can, uh, you can see the impedance, um, both the self-impedance as well as the mutual impedance um, is, is there. Um, EMS also gives you a lot more um, uh, circuit parameter uh, quantities that are uh, useful for electrical uh, engineers. Um, uh, you can calculate the inductance of your uh, coil system. Um, and uh, uh, you can look at the resistance of your uh, coil um, and uh, the induced voltage. Um, also, the losses occurring um, uh, in the plate uh, can actually be, and in the coil, can actually be uh, computed. Okay. Now, uh, really, uh, uh, this is what we wanted to uh, show you today in this uh, quick uh, product demonstration. Uh, let me go ahead and reiterate some of the points that we covered here. Is EMS is a product that can uh, allow you 
to quickly do these what if scenarios okay you can actually go ahead and you can say what if my uh, my crack is bigger what if my crack is smaller what if if i change the size of my coil uh, my pancake coil uh, my receiving coil um, and so on so you can do uh, various kinds of studies what if i place my receiving coil in a different uh, location and so on so uh, ems allows you to do that okay and uh, by doing that, uh, you can actually optimize your uh, sensor, basically find the best coils for your sensor, the best location for your coils, and also optimize based on the best frequency that you're going to use to excite your coil. Okay. Um, and so this uh, uh, kind of sums up uh, how EMS can actually be used uh, in these type of applications. So let me go back, uh, revert back to my PowerPoint here. Um, and uh, quickly jump to how are our products bundled. Okay, Now EMS product actually has EMS professional and EMS premium. These are the two bundles uh, which are available to, to customers today. Now EMS professional comes with uh, the electric solvers as well as the magnetic solvers. Okay, So basically you can do uh, if your excitation is DC, if you have permanent magnets, if your excitation is AC, if your excitation is any other like a pulse or anything that varies as a function of time, EMS can handle them in their magnetic uh, simulations. Okay? Also you can couple EMS to thermal as well as motion okay? um, and this could be useful uh, for certain cases. And the EMS premium is basically uh, all of these things packaged nicely with a, with a much better pricing uh, when you compare uh, buying EMS professional and adding on the individual add-ons. EMS Premium is the full suite. It's it, it's everything that uh, EMS has to offer, um, including what is known as parametrization. And uh, in in the in the case of parametrization, one can actually uh, use um, any dimension created uh, in SolidWorks, and uh, you can actually parametrize that dimension, and you can do simulation that uh, and vary these uh, values, and you can see how the uh, how this particular uh, how certain parameters affect your results. Okay? And finally at HFWorks is a product that uh, is in the high frequency space. We just have one product which is HFWorks which can actually do resonance antenna and S parameters basically for RF and microwave um, applications. Uh, HFWorks also can be coupled to thermal to see how hot your RF and microwave devices get. Now uh, to be able to do what I just showed you in the product demonstration all you need is EMS professional. Okay. To be able to do uh, design any kind of uh, eddy current based or uh, magnetic based uh, sensors for NDT application, um, you need EMS professional. So that's the base product that one uh, you need to have. Okay. And uh, just as a reiteration, here are some of the key industries and applications where uh, electromagnetic products can be used. Uh, so all the way from uh, actuators, uh, linear as well as rotary actuators, solenoids. Um, uh, magnetic clutches, brakes, electromagnetic shielding, uh, inductive heating, um, uh, and uh, a lot of electronic applications including PCB, um, RF and microwave components, etc. can be solved using either EM EMS or HFWorks product. And EMS has been around uh, uh, for, since 2006 and uh, these products are gold certified partners. Of, we are gold certified partner of SolidWorks. We are also a certified partner of Autodesk Inventor and Space Claim. So uh, over, the, over, the, uh, over these years, um, we have acquired uh, a good list of uh, customers. So it's, it's trusted by over 400, actually 450 customers uh, as of now. Uh, make use of our technology and our products to design um, uh, for their various design needs. Okay, and with this, uh, I would like to thank uh, all of you for attending today's webinar. Okay, if you have any queries related to pr the product uh, today's webinar or any other sales-related queries, uh, Adam is our account uh, manager, uh, and uh, here is uh, his uh, uh, email as well as cell phone. Uh, we feel free to give us a call and we'll uh, be very happy to help you there. Um, also another great resource that uh, we encourage you to visit is our website which is emworks.com where you can get product information, you can get white papers, YouTube videos, etc. 
uh, feel free to contact us uh, if you would like to uh, try out our product, if you would like to have a customized demo, uh, or if you would just like to speak to an uh, application specialist uh, discussing your particular problem or your particular need, feel free to reach out to us uh, either in that phone number or the email. Or, or even uh, we even have a chat um, facility uh, from our website. So, um, if you have any questions, we are we, we are there to help you, uh, and and it will be our pleasure uh, to uh, to answer them. Okay. Uh, with this, uh, pretty much we come to an end of uh, today's webinar. On behalf of uh, EMWords, um, I thank you all for uh, participating and uh, making available your time to attend uh, today's webinar. Okay, uh, and as I had uh, mentioned earlier, uh, the recording of today's webinar will be posted, uh, and an email will be sent uh, to all uh, participants. Okay, and for people who joined us today, you will also get this email. Uh, feel free to uh, uh, you know uh, distribute this email to to colleagues and friends who may be interested, um, who, who might find this topic useful. Okay, and uh, with that, uh, we will close today's webinar. Uh, and uh, look forward to seeing you in the next upcoming uh, EMWorks, uh, EMS or HFWorks webinar. Okay, thank you very much.